what a difference some uh, 48 hours make. It's not a whole lot different, the efficacy rate, but it is a little bit lower. What's the impact this going to have? Hi, Anne-Marie. Um, well, to me, this has all turned out to be no more than a storm in a teacup. I really don't understand why that DSMB, Data Safety Monitoring Board of the trial, did what it did for a three percentage point difference. Um, and of course, we focus on the 76, 79, 76. The, the efficacy in the older population went from 80 to 85. And the efficacy against severe disease remained at 100% with now eight cases in the placebo group. So I, I think I, I really don't know what happened here. I don't understand why this DSMB did what it did. I really think somebody has to have a good look inside to see whether there was any um, any malpractice or, or, or mm. activity that shouldn't have been shouldn't have been done. <laughs> It's very interesting, and many are saying, similar to what you're saying, that this is just really a rounding error. So why was there so much of a spotlight put on this? But, Sam, when you look at this, and it's just another doom and gloom cloud for AstraZeneca, especially on the PR front, will this, pull, will this be harder for them to get approval in the United States? No, the FDA focuses on the data. They don't care if somebody disgruntled it at ESMB or disgruntled in a in Astra wanted to push a press release out or say something. Um, I think that's got nothing to do with it. It might impact the public perception of the vaccine. But that would be so sad, Anne-Marie, because at the end of the day, this was completely unnecessary. This was a mm. solid trial with very nice data. Okay, it may not look as high as the uh, Pfizer, BioNTech, or Moderna efficacy, but they were done six months ago. Um, and frankly, what we really care about with these vaccines at the moment is... is, is controlling severe disease and, and hospitalizations. So um, yeah. I, I don't think it would make an impact. And you're right, it would be sad because there's so many people who are just desperate to then to get in line to get their shot. Sam, just very quickly, I want to get your sense on what we're expecting out of the EU today. Do you think we could see a, quote, win-win scenario between the EU and the UK in terms of vaccine exports? Yeah, but Anne-Marie, just to note, I am 24 hours into having had my first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. And Still here to tell you the story, so um, I'm glad that um, the vaccine at least is rolling out in the UK. We're the happy EU, to hear it. Yeah, thank you. The EU and the UK have to sort this out because at the end of the day, it benefits nobody to have this kind of fight going on. And, you know, there was another press release from AstraZeneca yesterday talking about all those stockpiles that the EU has talked about in, um, in Italy. I really wish, really, really wish, if I had one wish left, that the politicians stay out of this and let scientists and medical experts get on with their jobs.